Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. All the medals is becoming increasingly inaccurate, and welcome to Pyanodon Recap Super Shorts. While recording the last medals video, there was a brief moment where I said to myself, I will definitely be able to do all the medals in one video. That was a lie. Today we will once again not do all the medals. In fact, there's a good chance that chromium processing is not even going to be the direct next video, but we are going to do aluminum and titanium, and aluminum has its own weird shit going on, so we should be fine. Anyway, let's chug along to the aluminum build so we can talk about some of its quirks. The new aluminum processing recipe is one of the first recipes where you input a chemical in order to make the processing work. This is a precursor to chemical science, where all of your methods of ore processing will require you to put in exorbitant amounts of random different chemicals, which I'm excited for, but we're not doing yet. And aluminum demanded that we do phosphate processing, so let's hop down to phosphate land so we can talk about how we get phosphoric acid, the fluid we need to process aluminum. First, we'll pop all the way down to where we mine the phosphate, with a crazy I don't know why I did these rails this way, but whatever. Mining phosphate rock requires drill heads and syngas. Interestingly, we are not actually using a train to deliver syngas for some reason. We just have a massive line of niobium pipes carrying syngas from the bus. Meanwhile, drill heads are requested and carried out with a paltry one shoot. Once you mine phosphate rock, you can break it down into powdered phosphate rock and stone. But rather than introduce a train stop to deal with the stone, I decided I would just burn it. But I was like, hmm, where will I get a solid fuel? And it turns out you can get zero input raw coal from spore collectors making fuogi spores, turning them into fuogi, turning the fuogi into coal in a high pressure furnace, and then you can use that to burn your stone. Now let's pop up to phosphate processing. You didn't see me just start the train running while I wasn't in it. Okay, one second. Apparently we're getting an alert sound for circuit refill at science because apparently one or both of us had the bright idea to put circuits in a chest and have that be the entire source of sci circuits for science. That's so funny and fucked. Well, I turned it off by applying a deconstruction planner from the map, so we're just going to pretend that this never happened and I will make sure that Arch and I fix it when we start playing because the alert will turn on tonight. Anyway, we deliver pure sand and powdered phosphate rock to this system. The pure sand comes from byproduct land, but that is sometimes insufficient. So what I should do is make sure... Okay, I think we actually have a priority. We have a priority belt here, so that if there's no pure sand in this shed, then the pure sand from this little pure sand processing system we created, which, wow, that requires a lot of water and soil, this pure sand will go into the high-pressure furnace afterwards. Thanks, transport belt. With the help of even more syngas, we can turn the powdered phosphate rock with the help of ash into phosphorus acid, which is different from phosphoric acid, despite having an almost identical color. You can turn this phosphorus acid with the help of wood and steam, which we are taking right now from an electric boiler, but previously we were taking it from the enormous amount of steam that you get from making the uh, polybutadiene for rubber. And then we realized that that was not enough steam anymore for everything, and we were using way too much steam, and so we cried. But anyway, we add steam from an electric boiler um, to make the phosphoric acid and phosphine gas. We're venting the hydrofluoric acid because there's nothing we can do with it right now. Meanwhile, the phosphine gas goes to turn into some phosphoric acid. So in the end, you get lots of phosphoric acid, and then we export that in a train. Now let's go to the aluminum ore deposit so we can talk about any pre-processing steps we're doing. I say any because I don't actually know what pre-processing steps we're doing because I didn't make this. It looks like the entirety of our pre-processing is turning aluminum ore into powdered aluminium and allowing the gravel and powdered aluminium to go into the base. Now I remember that I asked Arch to do something crazy to make the coal gas. I'm trying to figure out what that is by following this niobium pipe around. Aha, uh -huh, I see. We are taking extra coal from the coal patch that supplies our coke, so this raw coal. And we are unceremoniously slapping it into destructive distillation columns and then venting the excess tar. And that allows us to mine aluminum ore. Now let's go to the actual aluminum block. Powdered aluminium goes into a mixer with lime and phosphoric acid to make aluminum pulp stage 1. We have one coke input that's going to both graphite, which we'll talk about, and lime, and that lime's going down. Arch likes these fun, dense rails are in the middle of the whole thing, and they will kill you, bus design. You can see that the limestone soil extractors are actually down here, just because there was space for them. Anyway, aluminum pulp 1 goes to make aluminum pulp 2 with the help of some steam, which we're just supplying with electric boilers, because of course we are. Then, with the help of graphite and borax, we can make actual molten aluminium. Molten aluminium with sand casting and hot... Air makes aluminium plates, or we can use it to make duralumin with the help of molten copper, which is actually why we exported molten copper from the copper build, as we learned in the last episode. And we're fueling the smelter with acetylene. Alright, that's it for the aluminum build. Alright, it is titanium time, my dudes. 
This is another Arch build, and for some ungodly reason, Arch decided to build all of the titanium stuff next to the titanium patch. Maybe pre-processing was too difficult, I don't know, but let's find out how this shit works. With 56 acetylene per second, um, we get 28- we get 15.4 titanium ore from 28 miners. We have mining productivity. 9 automated screeners turn it into titanium grade 1 and titanium grade 2. Titanium grade 2 turns into more titanium grade 1, so theoretically we could transport that to an actual titanium build if we wanted to, but I guess we just decided to keep going. Titanium grade 1 turns into titanium grade 3 and titanium rejects, and then the titanium rejects turn into more titanium grade 3. And finally, we smelt the titanium grade 3 into titanium plates. Wow, that was actually incredibly simple. It's only been 5 minutes? Wow. Okay, bonus round. Let's talk about all the metal catalysts that we needed for Petrochem, which is coming up fairly soon. Catalyst number 1, titanium tetrachloride. Hold us titanium and chlorine. We are creating chlorine at the bus using um, an atomizer that turns guts into chlorine. Please ignore these two other sheds full of guts. There were other issues going on involving me being incapable of putting things on one side of the belt or the other exclusively. Chlorine gets delivered to the train base that way, so we just have it. It's great. I think the guts are coming from the Vrock slaughtering that we're doing um, for Arcads, and also the Vrock slaughtering that we're doing for Formic Acid for Rubber. Before we talk about tin and chromium alloy and nichrom, we need to talk about chromium processing. To no small amount of dismay, we are doing all of our pre-chromium processing right here on top of the bus using, how many is this? F 27 ore miners. These turn 15 ore into 3 chromite grade 1, which we then turn into chromite grade 3, and chromite grade 2, which we turn into chromite grade 1. Okay, the chromite grade 2 turns back into chromite grade 1, and then we slap the chromite grade 1 back into this chromite grade 3 machine. I see. What an interesting loop. Yeah, we literally just transfer the, the items over with a long inserter. And then chromite grade 3 gets sent over to a train thing. And then we just have a lot of random chromium plates like everywhere. There's like six chests full of chromium plates over here because we just... Originally we weren't doing this chromite processing, we were doing the most basic possible method so that we could build some stuff that we really need to chromium up to build. So technically we could use these to make medium electric poles, but that requires having chromium in your inventory and I don't like that. Anyway, off to chromium processing part 1. Chromite grade 3 in water turns into chromite grade 4 and chromite rejects. The chromite rejects are turned into more chromite grade 3, which cycles back down, and we have an input priority on the splitter, so that this chromite gets used first. Now, I'm pretty sure we need to be belt balancing this, and I'm not sure if it's gonna break, but it looks like it hasn't broken so far. As long as the chromite rejects are being used, everyone's happy. And then finally, all that chromite grade 4 turns into chromite sand at a rate of 18 per second, which is why we're doing this absolute fucking madness that I guess balances the splitters until you're left with two belts out. Oh, it's some kind of belt balancer that evenly balances 18 per second between two belts so that we can split it directly in between these six casting units. Neat. Sand casting, limestone, carbon dioxide, and you're done. So many limestone soil extractors, with the result of getting 6 chromium per second. We're getting the carbon dioxide not from coke, because that's really inefficient, but from biomass, which we just get from wood. So there's probably a wood input somewhere here toward the bottom. Yep, there we go. We can export that chromium, or we can turn it into another of the catalysts we use for petrochem, tin and chromium alloy. And now for our final um, catalyst, which is going to be nichrome. Sorry, not final catalyst, there's more, but let's go to nichrome first. Nichrome is nestled in a corner of our metal processing mole area. We do two things here. One, we process more chromium, in roughly the same way as before, but as you can see, the organization is significantly different. And Arch is still doing this thing he's doing, and I don't know if it's right. But this chromium we don't actually export at all. Its main goal is to make nichrome from nickel, so let's talk about how we do nickel. Where the hell are we mining nickel? Why do I not know how we made this build? Where is it? Ah, over here. Okay, let's see what's going on here. We have so many of these using syngas again. Note, at the time I had made petrochem, so we had lots of syngas, but petrochem is not an episode we're doing now. But this makes 13.2 ore per second, which it looks like we're turning into a bunch of nickel grade 1 at a rate of 3 per second. Then we turn Nickel Grade 1 into, like, so much shit. Nickel Grade 3, Nickel Grade 2, Nickel Rejects. Nickel Grade 3 turns directly into Grade 4. What does Nickel Grade 2 do? It turns into more Grade 1. And then Nickel Rejects turn into more Grade 1. And then Nickel Grade 1 turns into more Grade 3. I see. Wow, how the hell did we do this one? Okay, it looks like while gravel is split off and sent to a train stop, absolutely everything else passes into the other side. The chromium grade, the nickel grade 3 is split off using a splitter, and then the other two types, the grade 2 and grade, uh, and the rejects go into this line. 
The grade 2 is forcibly split off at this splitter, so only rejects come down to this secondary crusher. And then it looks like these two automated screeners are enough to fully process the output grade 1, I guess? I... probably he calculated this correctly. And then two ball mills would uh, make the nickel grade 4. Arch, if you're listening to this, step back a little bit and see at the point I said which. It really is a vocal stim, I'm so sorry, Arch. Anyway, lots of train stops, delivering sin gas, picking up sand and gravel and stone, and picking up the nickel grade 4. Here we have a multi-item pickup, which is pretty fun. It's the same idea as usual, you just request several things with your cybernetic combinator, only in limited amounts that all fit in the storehouse. And whenever a train pops by, it's all pulled out very fast by mini loaders. Because this station only has a train limit of one, I don't think we can make multiple requests at once, but this system was not designed for that, and I think it's generally fine for the amount of nickel grade 4 we're actually delivering, which I don't know how much, but I guess it's 1.5 per second. We require enough nitrogen and oxygen that I'm pretty sure we are getting it all from all of these destructive distillation columns. It looks like we're not avoiding nitrogen, but we are avoiding oxygen and purest nitrogen. I would guess that those numbers work out somehow. Presumably you use nitrogen fast enough that you always have enough oxygen, I guess. That doesn't make any sense. I have no idea what Arch is doing here, but probably at some point we'll need to slap down an overflow valve, because it would be nice to have nickel for other things when we're not using nichrome. Who knows what's happening here, I don't. But we make nickel, and we make nichrome, and it's great! Alright, Dawn of the Final Metal, Nectolite. Remember when I was talking about how there were many fuck-ups with the transport belt delivering guts to chlorine? Yes. That's because I realized I needed to put meat and guts on the same belt, so of course I wanted to sideload them, have guts on one side, meats on the other. But like, I sourced meat and guts from several different places, and sometimes, like, I, I took meats from the awog factory, uh, the animal um, parts factory for science, for example. And when I took off the belt, I didn't realize that it delivered both guts and meat, so that was very sad. I was naively sideloading the guts and meat onto the belt, and then I was like, hmm, I wonder why there are guts on the side of the belt that's only supposed to have meat. And then I did that in several other places because I'm a terrible person. But eventually, we fully isolated the guts to be on one side and the meats to be on the other, so I'm happy. Why all of this meat, you ask? Well, because of Digasauruses. Digasauruses are cute little dinosaur critters, um, and I guess there's no Nexolite to pull out right now, otherwise we'd get to see them, and I do not want to pull out 1,000 raw Nexolite from this dig site, so... Alright, fine. As a treat, I'll collect some of this Nexolite so we can see the dinosaurs start traveling. Will they start going? No, I guess not. I guess this has to be actually empty. That's so sad. There you go, look at them, they're running out on the asphalt! Oh, it's so fun! Oh, they're having so much fun, they're mining up the Nexolite and they're gonna bring it back to the dig site! And they eat meat! Because, after all, they're dinosaurs. And so we give them meat, I guess there's not enough meat in the system right now, but we have tons of Nexolite, so it doesn't matter. We'll get more meat later, I suppose. And then we turn the clean Nexolite into- the raw Nexolite into clean Nexolite, and then smelt that into Nexolite using advanced foundries. And Nexolite is another catalyst for Petrochem, which is why we needed it. Wow, so unexpectedly, I lied at the beginning of this episode, and we were actually very accurate when I said all the metals is done. Now, technically that's still like a little bit of a lie, because we did make molybdenum um, recently, but we didn't turn molybdenum into molybdenum plates. So I'll talk about molybdenum when we talk about seaweed, because that is more relevant to seaweed than anything. For now, however, that's it for today's episode. There are so many builds to name. We have the aluminum build, and the phosphate build, and the titanium build, and the chromium build, and the nickel chromium build, and the nexolite build. If you have any ideas for any of them, please feel free to share. I don't think we're going to get names for all of them, but, at, you know, we can try. Arch did come up with a name for the Arcad build. The name is Aggressive Arcads Rapidly, Demonically, Violently Attacking Random Critters, with a K, so that the, uh, so that the acronym is A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. Aardvark, which is something I can say. I mean, I could say all the others too, but it's fun to say Aardvark, so... Someone suggested Arcad Subsystem, which is also great because it stands for ASS, but we have another ASS, it's called the Ash Separation System, and like, we have it in several places, so like, we couldn't do that. But it was a good suggestion. Remember that Arch and I stream every Tuesday at 6pm Mountain Time, um, with some extra streams as well, if you'd like to watch us do this live. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!